Hello, friends. Welcome to the F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. I'm your host, Haroja Shai. Hello, uh, this is Haroja Shai, your moderator of this channel, and this is F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. And this is uh, season four, episode five, 405, Method Not Found. So this episode takes place Christmas Day morning. We seem to have slowed the time down a little bit these last couple days. And we have no definitive answer on Tyra Willick. Um, nobody has been found. TV will say that nobody, no death. Uh, but the F uh, not F Society, but the uh, Dark Army Van has been found. And we'll get into that. Um, we are paring down a lot of our characters, if you will, as we're barreling down to the end of the season, which is a 13 episode season. So this is the fifth episode. And we potentially have lost a major character in Tyra Wellick. Uh, but we have, on this episode, we have Dom and Darlene paired together again. I mean, not Dom and Darlene, but uh, Elliot and Darlene. We have Dom going solo here. Uh, we have Price. And we have Krista and Vere. Another coupling, if you will. Um, this is where, you know, the this episode, the bulk of it is Elliot and Darlene enacting their heist plan to take over the Cypress Bank accounts that are owned by uh, Minister Zhang, a.k.a. White Rose take over her accounts and basically take her down, if you will. Uh, and then we have Dom coming into the fold, if you will, uh, into her dark arminess. Uh, we have Krista finally meeting Veer, and then we have Price uh, being summoned to a location which presumably is a de the Dexas uh, meetup. So I'm going to do the smaller stories first. I'm not going to do a chronological order on the smaller stories. Um, this was a silent Christmas. There were only two lines of dialogue, which was spoken by Darlene, like, to her brother when she picks Elliot up. And we'll get to that story part. But she says, um, uh, cool, we don't need to talk. And then Veer at the end, uh, when he introduces himself to Krista, we do, we need to talk. So two lines of dialogue. This entire episode was basically silent in expression in the music background and the city noise, I guess you could say. Um, so let's start with Dom. Um, Dom is in her apartment, sad, sad Dom, and she takes these pre-made tin can cookies and just dumps them in a Tupperware and she's presumably going home for Christmas, you know, being with her family. But she gets a, a text message to the signaling app that everybody on the show uses because that's the best end-to-end -end encryption. Not the best. I mean, there's other ones. There's Riot. Um, I'm not going to go into it. But it is the best, most familiar one that people have. And Janice says that uh, we need you to take care of a problem. And you have to go to, was it Perrytown? Is the, the town that Tyra Welk and... Uh, Elliot R and she says we're at and uh, we need you to get the information on this issue for us so Dom has to basically she didn't go home for Christmas Eve and now she's gonna miss Christmas Day with her family that she's doing all this for to protect and so she has to stop what she's doing and go out to this podunk basically podunk town up in upstate New York to find out what's going on uh, she gets there, there, you know, there's no dialogue, she's not really interacting with the police officer so much. Um, but it's the Dark Army Bond, it's been burnt. Uh, we see that in the Elliot and Darlene storyline that, it, it, you know, it's, it's on fire, it's being burnt. Um, so she's taking, you know, Gander information. She gets into her car, uh, she starts driving off, and she sees that there's a... Uh, basically a traffic cam and it's pointing towards the direction to where the dark army van was so she knows that there is video access and that will allow her to figure out like what the hell is going on how did this dark army operative you know i get burnt to a crisp and all the information you know you 
you see like all the computer parts all spread out everywhere. You do see a phone, and I'm not sure whose phone it is, but there's a phone. It could be the Dark Army guys. It could be Tara Wellick's phone um, on the ground there. They really zoomed into it. And um, the body, of course, the Crips burnt body of the Dark Army guy. So she ends up going to the police station. She's sitting at a uh, desk. Obviously, she must have had a conversation when we uh, are there. And she does a bit of social engineering herself. I mean, Dom is an FBI agent. She's, she's got some skills. She walks away like she's like leaving the station. But she had basically lifted uh, the cell phone of one of the um, deputies and puts it in a donut box and then calls it. And by calling it, you know, it causes the deputy to look for the phone. She keeps hearing her phone because it has a distinctive ringtone. Goes to uh, to the kitchen to see if her phone's in the donut box. Doesn't know how that happened. It goes back to her desk. Uh, Dom had picked up earlier that this particular deputy had a distinctive cell phone ringtone. And she knew that was the person she should be targeting, I guess you could say. Uh, what Dom does is she goes back towards the deputy's desk and puts basically like a, I wouldn't say a splitter, but she puts a device on the computer that will allow for remote access, puts it on there, goes and uh, goes to her particular vehicle, pulls out their laptop, sees that she has uh, remote access, and then texts Janice through Signal and basically says, I can't get direct access, you know, as an FBI agent of the case but I did give you remote access and you should be able to access this computer and look for traffic cam footage and Janice is like okay and so Dom goes home goes to her family and you guys can say her mom's a little bit mad and she wasn't there for Christmas Eve she showed up all of a sudden like all distraught or whatever stayed with her mom for a bit and then goes back to work and now she's missing Christmas Eve, Christmas dinner, not really hanging out with the family, basically working, if you will. And so her and mom are not talking. And, you know, Dom's just a little, you know, sad dog. She's, she has to do these evil things for these evil people. And she's stuck because other, uh, when she gets a text from Janice, Janice is like, hey, this is a 9 on one situation. Uh, we need you to find these people chop chop and Dom is like internally freaked out because she knows what that means that's what Irvin basically you know after chopping up Santiago had uh, threatened Dom's family that she her family and knew all their names was going to kill them if Dom wasn't their dark army operative and so she gets a picture and it's from the traffic cam footage of Elliot and Darlene leaving the scene of the Dark Army van being, you know, destroyed. So now <laughs> Dom has to go back and find these two jokers. In particular, you know, Darlene. And that is the end of her storyline. And I don't think it's going to look good for Darlene. I really don't. The way Dom is, you know, I, I do think she still has feelings for Darlene, but she really cares about her family. And she's going to do whatever it takes to protect them. And if that means Darlene's got to go, girl, you got to go. And at the same time that in this, in this um, you know, Dom story, Dom gets information about that Irish fellow that is able to uh, disappear people. She got a message internally from the FBI that he has been released. So there's that wild card out there of is... Dom going to disappear herself, disappear her family. She has a very large family. There's a lot of people for her to disappear, especially considering she's not using Woodsec, which would have the better resources. And if she disappeared herself, then um, her family's done. So I'm not exactly sure what her play is. Maybe it's a basically a, a card in the back of her pocket or up her sleeve that maybe she could pull out for emergency purposes but there's that there when the with the Dom storyline which is now going to finally next episode intersect with the, the main storyline story of Elliot and Darlene and then we get another sad case price so I know a lot of restaurants are in fact open for Christmas 
Christmas Day. Uh, depending on your location, it could be a lot. It could be a few. Uh, they could do like this kind of brunch thing for like church service crowd or for people that, um, you know, don't have anywhere else to go. It's usually like typically like a Denny's or an IHOP or something or that one off, you know, uh, small restaurant. There's always the joke about the Chinese restaurants being open and many of them are. Uh, you can get takeout or go sit down, uh, but prices in is very nice, very elegant, nice restaurant, like fully staffed and there is a family eating and there's like, like when I say fully staffed, there's like four or five people waiting on Essence Price Party 1 and this family which is a party of four. So it was very weird and, it, and I've never been to New York and I don't think I've seen this really depicted culturally about Christmas and what restaurants are open, but it was like near, near dead empty. So, and I also don't know if it has to do, like if there was an overall internet outage, like with Ecoin or whatever, or just, you know, from the last episode, that could have been just that locale where up north there they had an internet outage. Uh, or, um, you know, it's just Christmas Day and people are just not out. But Price gets a message through his um, tip that he has to go in front of the E Corp and meet the trombone player and give him 20 bucks. So this is how he finds out about the location, I guess, for the Deus group. Uh, he also knows that um, Elliot texts him and knows that uh, Tyra Wellick is not going to be there at the meeting. So he has bad news about bad news. Um, so he goes to the E Corp building and he's kind of dressed down for price. Like he's not in his suits or his elegant, you know, money made suits. He's kind of, for him, he's kind of bummish, even though he's still expensive wear. He's kind of bummish and he goes in front of the E Corp building and the E Corp sign and he's looking around and then he hears the trombone player. Goes to the trombone player, uh, pulls out his wallet, well, pulls out his 20. The trombone player, uh, tips his hat out and inside is a uh, card and the card is for a uh, it's a slip for dry cleaning so it has um, what his um, what's being dry cleaned in the location and so he's like okay he's like Ugh. he doesn't even talk to the trombone no, there's no dialogue there's no talking there's no talking that's whatsoever and if you think about it, like as, like certain interactions, you could like go throughout your day not actually speaking to people. Like if you go into public transport, you're not talking, saying hey to the bus driver. You're putting your money in. You sit down. Maybe not talking to your fellow trans, you know, passengers. You go in the restaurant. Maybe you do your initial order. Yeah, and that's that's it. And they come by and they're like, nah, nah, nah. Um, you're tipping out. You're probably not really even talking to the server. You just put your card down, sign the paper, put in the tip amount, and go um or you know cash or whatever so he goes he we go and we see price at his home that's when he finds out the message from elliot through signal that uh, tyro wellick is not going to make the meeting <laughs> and tyro uh not tyro but uh price unzips this outfit he picked up and it's a it's a dark suit and it's like that's the suit you wear to death. Like, that's your funeral outfit. And I think even Price knows it's his funeral outfit. And he's just kind of miffed with the the charade, like the ceremony, the, the game that White Rose is still playing. And he checks the pockets and see that there's a location for him to go that day or later in the evening wearing that suit. So we have this location of a place in time that um, I don't see it on my notes here, uh, where Price is supposed to go for the Deus group meeting. And the boy, I think he knows his death because it just totally looks like this is a suit you put your grandpa in or your loved one in um, so that they look nice, you know, for the open cassock and the whole death ceremony thing. Um, that's the suit you wear. And that's the suit that Price is, <laughs> is wearing. It's just, it's, you know, there's no need to uh, even do an autopsy or embalming or anything. You just double tap him, put him in the coffin, and it won't, won't be open, cast, open casting, and you're, you're done. Everything's done already because Price is going to put the suit on. So, 
that ends his story, Dom Price. And then we get to Krista, which is my my fun episode. There was like a lot of comedic moments in here. Like it was a little funny that the trombone guy gave Price like tipped his hat out and like there was the card. It was like very old school, like spyish type of stuff, Cold War spy from the spy movie think kind of video. And it was kind of amusing, but um and that chop chop, that dark humor of Jan is like chop chop telling telling Dom what to do. I hope if there is a genus Dom versus, you know, Jason Freddy Krueger style, you know, Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, I hope Dom just like butchers, really butchers the hell out of that, that chick. Just really gets her. Um, <clears throat> so, Krista, you know, she gets a text and she's with her new man. She's like, um, Let's blow off our families. Let's have, you know, a two of us kind of a Christmas day. Uh, she's not going to see her family. She's going to see him later in the evening. So, still so Christmas morning. She goes out shop, do a little bit of shopping for their Christmas to together, you know, meal. And she's shopping at a very, like, really boutique, nice gro grocery store. I know it's New York and they have, they don't really have like traditional grocery stores or supermarkets. They have like these boutique places, those bodegas if you will, where you're supposed to do all your shopping, where your fresh fruits and meats and stuff, or specialty stores where you go to the butcher and then you go to the vegetable guy and you may go to like the fruit guy. It's like all specialty stuff. Uh, so she's in one of these really nice ones, wines and stuff like that, and there's people in there and there is somebody following her, uh, a young woman um, who's a rapper, uh, young MIA. I know she's very popping right now. Um, I think I may have only heard one of her songs, but um, another New York rapper, okay? We've had Joey Badass, and Leon hasn't made appearance this season. When I saw uh, Young MIA, I was like, okay, so when's Leon gonna show up? I know he's Dark Army, but when, t when is he gonna show up? So Young M.A. is uh, following Krista, you know, it's kind of obvious, and I think Krista clocked her, like, at the grocery store, because she, she, Young M.A. kind of looks out of place. She's in this, you know, big, big, huge, really puffy uh, jacket, you know, you know, not to be classist, but I, it, it seemed like she, this is not the place she would be shopping for her groceries, but whatever, it's New York, random people, but Krista clocked her and paused for a second and just kind of went about her day. Uh, YMA, you know, leaves the, the store realizing that maybe Krista saw her or whatever, it goes out and it just kind of waits. You can see like in the corner waits for Krista to leave the store. So Krista leaves the store, must be pretty local be, or like within, you know, reasonable walking distance. She's walking home, uh, young MA is across the street. Krista knows she's being followed. I mean, she, she ran into Elliot, I'm sure there's been some other funny business we haven't seen yet, but uh, she sees young M.A. across the street and she knows something's up. So she tries to scramble to get into her home, but she has like grocery bags and open the key. She drops her stuff. She's trying to open them and she tries to go get her stuff, the stuff she dropped. I mean, if I was personally scared, I'd fuck the groceries, get right, right, right into the... Uh, into the into the building, call the cops, say suspicious. Oh God, <sighs> suspicious individual crossed away, or maybe not say anything at all. Just you know, warm up, call your boo, have him come over or something. Um, but she goes down to get her stuff, and you know, she has like this one can of like I think it was Ben and Jerry's is like spilled up on across the sidewalk. And coming towards Krista as she's picking up her stuff is Veer. And then YMA is right behind Krista. And so she's kind of like boxed in. And Krista looks up. And Veer is a kind of a, he's a very tall fellow, intimidating fellow, intimidating presence, very crazy looking. And he tells Krista the second line is spoken, last line spoken, um, we need to talk. So... Veer finally met up with Krista, the woman that's supposed to help him bring Elliot into his fold so he could start his drug trade. And 
I don't know where exactly the Veer storyline is, but I've always said he's like this asteroid that, uh, you know, nobody's detecting. You know, you know he's out there somewhere floating around, but um, you're not keeping an eye on him because you have all these other things you're keeping an eye on, and he just comes in and boom, like the dinosaurs just wrecks your world. Uh, so that wraps up those storylines. Very small storylines, but very important. It moves things along. Dom is now on the Dark Army case of going after Elliot and Darlene. Don't know if those were kill orders or bring them in orders, but she's going to go track them down. Krista is now in the hands of Veer. And we have Price dressing up for his death day, I guess you could say. All this, again, taking place Christmas Day, before I would say before noon on Christmas Day, noon or one o'clock, very early in the morning here. Um, the other thing I would think about with um, Veer is just for the audience perspective, um, she might give some insights as a psychologist about Elliot that maybe we're not fully, completely aware of. And maybe we might find out about the third personality just from their interaction. That would be interesting, like the type of dynamic the conversation is. Because I think Krista is smart enough that she knows she has to reveal what she knows about Elliot with Veer, but not enough to get, you know, instant death from being kidnapped, obviously, by this dude. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what that brings uh, for the next episode. Okay, so... Elliot and Darlene are doing this, okay? Tom Cruise would be so proud of, of Rami Malek. Uh, I, I can't say Darlene, the actress is Darlene's name properly, but she was phenomenal in this episode as well. I hope this episode, I know they do this every season, they have like this um, one-off episode I talked about in live reaction, uh, like... The first episode, the first one they did like this, where it's kind of like different, but it moves the story along, and it's just a for the directors and writers and the production and the actors to do like something different on television. And you're not really seeing as much, or um, or, or at all on television, uh, what you can do with the medium. Um, the first one was like the kind of hallucinogenic like weird warping of reality and then the camera shots that they were doing for that like particularly like in the first season where Elliot was in his um, withdrawal phase and he was you know the place was getting shot up and how that was done it was very like old kind of old school music videos where you're having like the still stuff like the late aughts were doing that a lot like this still and then the move frame type of a deal going on uh, with that and then the whole like monster dialogue with Angela and the key and all that that's the dream stuff that people are showing out um, doing dream analysis of uh, even in the fourth season uh, the second season what was it hmm I know the third season was a single shot I forgot what the second season was oh it was the, the slow reveal that Elliot was really not in rehab with his mom, but he was in prison. That slow reveal where you do the, the turn and, he's, and then there's the flashbacks and you see that he's, you know, changed the narrative once again on the audience, you know, the friends, and created this whole reality within the, the world that he was living in that he wasn't in prison, but he was, you know, somewhere else that reveal and a little bit of the the, the heist if you will where uh and angela implanted the fifth cell there was that little camera stuff but i would say that that second season episode was that twist of the reveal that elliot was really in a prison the whole time which a lot of people including myself thought he was uh just the interaction there's just men just his mother no women no real street life going on, They're doing the same thing, routine. It was just a little weird, little big space for it to be like a rehab place area. But anyways, that caught up a reveal. 
Um, now we have this episode where everything is just silent, no dialogue, two two lines of dialogue, uh, no one really talking, and again, uh, Rami and Mesco did like a lot of running. Tom Cruise, like I said, would be super proud of him. Uh, this this sequence reminded me of the first Mission Impossible movie where Tom Cruise and his crew have to break into the CIA and get into that computer room, which is all white, and temperatures, and hanging from the ceiling and you know um, what's his face uh, had to like bite a rat a rat rat or something to order to keep Tom Cruise up from hitting the yeah the hanging scene where it was like a like a three or four minute sequence of just absolute silence barely breathing this episode that tension there and the that sequence reminded me of, of the, this episode reminded me of that sequence so Darlene, you know, gets her shit together. Um, she reactivates her GPS signal of, you know, Elliot and finds him. It's early morning. She's looking for him. She stops by the convenient place and then she sees the, the same convenient place that, um, you know, Tyrell and Elliot were at. That's one of the last locations she got pinged, so she knows she's in the area. She looking around and she sees smoke she knows that's her brother she goes and she sees a van that's on fire um, Elliot and Mr. Robot had in fact lit the, the van on fire and um, covering up their traces and Darlene pulls up and she's shocked and scared because she doesn't know if her brother is freaking in the van he taps on the door, scares the bejesus out of her, he gets in, and that's when she says her, you know, uh, Lana Dog, she's like, looks at the van, looks at him, and goes, cool bro, we don't need to talk about it, and they drive off, because both of them had kind of bit of a, bit of a day, you will, and there's shit that needs to get done. So they drive back into the city in their stolen vehicle to Elliot's apartment to prep for the heist. So they need to get into the to um, virtual reality to the server place, so that way they can access the servers to access site First National Bank and pull off the stealing of uh, Minister Zong or White Rose's funds. And um, you know they're prepping, um, creating um, all the programs that you need, um, getting the the employee card. Darlene's getting her social engineering gear on. She's got like a, you know, kind of a business casual outfit, wig. Uh, she has a look, if you will. So she, her appearance is different. Um, Elliot, you know, Elliot has, is going through it a little bit. There's a moment before this sequence where he's in the kitchen and he just, you know, has a cry. He's finally starting to break down and acknowledge, you know, there's been a lot going on in his life. You know, Tarawellic is pretty much dead. Angela, he knows for a fact, is dead. You know, Trenton, Moby, Ramon, uh, even Cisco. The fact that, you know, death is on the line if White Rose's project goes. He and Darlene are next. Uh, losing, you know, he saw all those dark... He saw... Spike it! Um, Elliot saw all those dark... Um, army agents die in that barn. I mean, there's been some, and then you know the 77 buildings. There's been some involved in a very short nine-month period of time, if you will, from when he quit heroin and was in you know jail and stuff till now. There's been a lot that's going on, even from the beginning of 2014. This year, worst year ever, worst year uh, ever to happen to a person. A lot of it, 99% of it, was his doing, but still, worst year ever. But Darlene comes in the kitchen, he, you know, he hears her coming, picks himself up. He doesn't want to be that vulnerable to his, in front of his sister. He washes his hands of the, the blood that's on his hands. And they, so Darlene and Ellie get back into that stolen car and drive to vir virtual reality. Okay, they drive a stolen car to the heist. I know it's Christmas Day and maybe it hasn't quite been reported yet, but it's still a stolen vehicle. There's cameras everywhere, as we learned from the Dom story. And so it was just very weird that they drove this stolen car, but I guess that's the vehicle they had, okay? Um, so 
Marilyn gets out to go into the virtual reality building. Elliot gets out as well. He kind of goes underneath the cam outside camera and starts smoking, which is something that he hasn't done for a while. Um, or at least we haven't seen Elliot smoke. We've seen Mr. Robot smoke. But I don't think we've actually seen Elliot himself smoke. And for a fact, Mr. Robot, not so much in this episode, not part of the heist. He's somewhere in the background there. Um, so Darlene has to do some bit of social engineering. She comes in. She not. She has to wait a little bit. She waits outside of the building for 11 o'clock because there's two guards, and that's when the one of the guards goes for his lunch, if you will, or break. She has so she has a timer, and all this basically what they're doing has to take place within a almost 40 minute window, like a 40 minute, maybe 50 minute window. So she gets in the building with, with the one guard. The one guard is at the station and he's watching Die Hard, the first one, which is the Christmas movie. So keep it in the spirit even though he's working. And he just nods at Darlene. She nods back. She goes to swipe her card and it's not working because it's not supposed to work. Uh, she keeps swiping. She keeps swiping. She keeps swiping. It's not working. So she goes back to the guard smiles and we pull back and we see Elliot who's kind of waiting for this moment and Darlene's face in the glass says how the service is taking place the guard's back is turned towards the outside and Darlene kind of interacts with him and she drops her bag as a cue for Elliot to do some uh, time cruise Olympic running he gets into the building he hops the turnstiles which is a New York thing um, just look at all the chaos and the MTA stuff is happening. Hops it, gets into the um, stairwell, goes and starts hopping up and running, 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 running until he gets into the corridor where he gets into in front of this particular door he needs. He does his boop booty bop hacking stuff, gets into that, into that room so that he can go onto the computer and access it. Uh, which is a networking computer that allows him to put Darlene in the system to indicate that she is an employee there at virtual reality and for the, the guard to let her get in because he has to do a visual check of her card, visual check of the person, and visual check of the, the, the uh, computer screen to verify that yes, this person is who they say they are. Um, Elliot is able to do that in time and then he starts working on the rest of the, the system privileges that he needs so he can complete the heist. Uh, one of them is updating this camera firmware that turns them off for 40 minutes. So that, that's their clock. Also to access the lights and other systems in the building. And so he's doing that. Um, Darling gets the go ahead. The guy lets her through. So she goes through and gets on the elevator. And she meets up with Elliot. And they go to... Um, virtual reality doesn't own the entire building, which is, I guess, a key point of this particular um, heist uh, they had share it um, on the bottom there's this the soul cycle people that, that had a bit of controversy earlier this year um, gym membership place it's very high-end type of gym membership um, there's a craft works where it's a 3d printing company and they need it to be able to um, print the fingerprint that Darlene was able to social engineer once again from the security guard. What she had done is she had left her phone behind and as she's walking away to go to work, the the, the guard kind of indicates, he goes, he whistles to her and she turns around and he has, you know, his thumb on her phone. Um, the particular, um, I guess, screen thing was done in a way to where they're able to get a clear print so Darlene she has his backpack Ellie has his backpack and stuff he gets to work to get into getting all the computers and printer stuff she gets to work to smoke out um, from her screen the fingerprint gets a clear print scan they scan it in they get to work and printing it up they're getting all their stuff together as that's printing so they can access the server room because they're going to use the security guard to access the server room, they have Darlene's badge, they not be able to access the floor itself, but they need to get in the server room. 
So they do all that. Uh, it takes a bit of time. It's kind of neat watching it all the process go. It doesn't take really that tremendous amount of time to do, but they're like. Ellie is like manipulating the graphics, the layers, boop, 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 boop. It's printing, it looks really cool. I'm just, I was wondering why they couldn't just do like a tape thing and do it, but maybe, um, or putty or something to uh, do the thumbprint, but maybe they needed like, um, just by the nature of the scanner, maybe they needed something a little bit more sophisticated, if you will, for the, for the thumbprint. So, <clears throat> They go, they get the thumbprint, and it allows them access to the server room. Meanwhile, down below at the security desk, the guy notice, he knows that his cameras aren't working. He's, there's nobody for him to call, so he goes up to the IT room, access the IT room, see what's going on, sees that the firmware of the camera is updating, and it's going to take a while, and he can't stop it. So he's sitting there, and he feels that. I guess a bit suspicious that there, there would be a firmware update on Christmas Day. Maybe he didn't know about it. So he goes back to his desk and sees about access and sees where Darlene was at. So he's doing his little security solution down there. Um, so Darlene and Elliot get into the server room. They go to the right row of servers that they need. They start inputting and hacking into the system to give basically these fundamental admin privileges um, using the credentials that they have um, and the mapping of the network they have done to be able to get into um, the Cypress uh, bank to their to, through their servers to be able to access what they need to access so they can do what they need to do and this, this is going to take time there's a lot Darlene's doing a lot of typing a lot of creation um, Elliot is keeping watch, keeping, you know, helping along with her. They're, they're doing their thing. But the security guard down below is suspicious. He goes up to the floor and they realize it. And um, he starts looking around the floor. And he's looking and he's checking things. And he also realizes that the server room, whatever his instincts were, like the server room, his access was granted for the server room. And so he goes up there to see what the fuck is going on because he didn't access the server room. So Darlene and Elliot are in the server room while this guy is doing his thing. And he's, so Elliot, to give them time, turns off the lights in the server room so he can't see them. And that makes the guard more suspicious. He starts walking around. They start hurrying things up. They finally complete the job before the guard realizes that they're there. I mean, it was a really tense scene. He's walking this way. Elliot's like, you know, they're packing up. They're doing, Darlene's still doing her typing. It's like, there's nothing much you could do. They got a clock on the timing, like when the cameras are going to come back on. Um, so people are going to know that they were in the server room. Um, I, Cause I guess they couldn't really wipe everything, if you will, or wiping it wasn't gonna do the trick. Just having it not work was the thing to do. So they bolt out of the server room with the security guard still in there. Elliot zip ties the door so he can't get out. They start going towards the um, elevators, but the other security guard is coming up because I got a text from the security above saying hey the server room is my credentials are utilized you need to call the police I'm gonna check out check it out because someone accessed using my credentials so that guy comes back from his break still watching Die Hard like a true Christmas patriot and he uh, goes up he's going up the elevator Darlene and Elliot know they can't use the elevator so they start going down the stairs and they just just booking it down these stairs. I think it was like four or five flights they're, they're booking it down. It's like dark, kind of darkish, like red, orange, and it's just going down, winding down. It's a, it was a very kind of, if you're vertigo inclined or whatever, it could have been a little nauseating. They get down to the stairs, down to the floor, and they see the security guards are there, and the cops are there. The cops have finally shown up, and they're like, and this is where, like, because of Elliot and Darlene's mental state, they are not on their A game because they should have had 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G exits out of that particular building if blah, 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 these things happen to exit, but they don't. So Elliot's peeking out through the, through the stairwell window and the, the main security guard that's been tracking them sees him and Elliot holds onto the door. Darlie's there like freaking out, they don't know where to go and, he, and Elliot's like, he takes off his backpack, gives it, basically gives it to Darlene and pushes his way through, knocks down the security guard, jumps the turnstile, blows past the cops, starts running left and running through New York and now it's a chase. So Darlene's in the stairwell, the security guards and the, the cops are going after Elliot and Darlene books it up towards uh, another office floor and she she's hiding out, she knows the cameras are on so she's kind of keeping herself hidden behind a pylon and she's just looking around, looking around and she sees water bottles and she sees a gym jacket and she's going to take off her outfit, put it in her backpack and she's going to walk out as herself, get rid of all evidence that she was whoever she was before and pretend she's a, a gym member. Now, she does do this and the reason why I think it was successful is uh, the initial security guard that was you know, checked her in or whatever, wasn't there. It was the second security guard still holding down the fort because Elliot has caused everyone to start chasing after him. I'm not even really sure where I clocked where the second security guard is. He could have been, like, sitting out somewhere and I just missed it. I was trying to look for him in the second preview, but I didn't see him. So I don't know where he went um, because he did get banged up a little bit. Uh, but Darlene walks out the door past the cops to the stolen car, gets in, turns on her single GPS app and starts driving away slowly to go find her brother. Now this thing with Elliot and running from the cops, it was magnificent. He running through Central Park, he's knocking people down. There was a part where he goes through a, a baby cart, like an old school baby cart, but it turns out to be cans. Uh, so he didn't knock babies, but he's knocking people right and left. He's running from the cops, going this way, that way. And I was like, okay, one, they're not shooting him. Two, they haven't stun gun him or whatever. Three, where's the convergence? I know it's Christmas Day, but given the stuff that has happened with the pol police and interaction with the public, I'm surprised they weren't firing bullets at him. Um, so that took me out for a moment. It's like, <sighs> they would have shot him. I'm just sorry, they would have shot Elliot. They would have. And, you know, he's a brown man in America. They would have shot Elliot or shot at him. Um, but that's not what happened. So he's like just running through New York. I almost expected him to put like a perspective from Elliot, like a GoPro on Ramon's Elliot's head or something and him running, but they didn't do that. And so you're seeing these wide shots. Um, close-up shots of Elliot just running through, like running through the various little parks in New York. Um, he jumps like this wall and he's on an ice skate ring and he slides across and jumps over again and he's going through park after park and this way and that way and um, more and more cops are getting involved. Um, he's in the street, he jumps the sidewalks, he's going this and that. And they're, they're converging on him, really. I mean, you can start seeing like a lot behind him, some in front of him, they're trying to cut him off. Um, he gets hit by a car eventually. Uh, we'll get into that. But he's running across the park, sees a bus, hops on it. Uh, that's not going to stop anything. He might stop those cops, but eventually they're going to stop the bus or call it in, and he knows that. Um, so he starts going through the bus, and kicks out the door, um, running and stuff, running back, running on the streets because the cops have blocked things up. That's when he gets hit by a car. Boom, we're thinking, oh, shit. Well, White Rose does not have to worry about Elliot anymore. And he gets up. He's banged up. He's already banged himself earlier from stuff, but he's really banged up. Like, he gets hit pretty hard. Uh, he starts hoppity hoppity and he, he's cornered there. The police are coming. He's wall. His back up is up against like a bridge wall thing. He's looking around and he's got really no more moves other than to jump. And um, 
for a second there you think he's gonna resign himself to being caught by the police but he 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 jumps the wall and he it's, uh, it's not a full-on bridge where like there's a gap in the you know there's cars below whatever it's like a little incline of mountain rubbish or whatever and he starts tumbling down and there's Darlene down below in the car she she um, honked her horn and he or I think she honked her horn she he, she might have been he might have been just looking around and he, he saw the second look down below he hops over he jumps this is a third time we've seen adult Elliot jumping from something the first time was um, on the bridge where we thought mr. Elliot pushed him when reality is Elliot jumping himself from the pier and then we see him it once again through his bedroom window going down the second story floor and, and jumping from there um, yeah so he jumps and there's Darlene waiting for him and then they they get away basically in a stolen car um, going across through New York um, I'm surprised she's not booking a little bit faster but she's probably keeping her speed not to draw further attention um, the cops must have seen the car or whatever they're gonna have to ditch that car ditch it something and hoof it somewhere but for a brief moment we're seeing them you know do their getaway and Elliot squeezes her hand and they're looking at each other and I guess you can say it was a success. Um, I'm not really sure what they have done if they actually stole the money because I all I saw on the screen was admin, admin, admin. Like they were giving themselves credentials to maybe potentially be able to steal the money, being able to have access to the servers. So there's a clock even on that because once the breach has been reported, I'm sure that whoever is responsible for virtual reality is going to start booking it to there they're gonna go through everything and so once Darlene and Elliot get to where they're supposed to be going they still have a, a ticking clock about taking this money from White Rose even if that's what they've um, already done you know um, I don't know if they can unwind that stuff but I'm not exactly sure what exactly they said they've done but that's the end of this episode. Um, it was a pretty amazing episode. I think some people were upset with it. And I think it really has to do with the Tyra Wellick. Like there wasn't a definitive answer on that. But for the most part, it, I thought it was very enjoyable. Um, very tense. Uh, it did feel weird that there was no talking at all. Um, I think the, the actors um, really were very expressive. And you can almost understand because they're just in business mode and they're just doing their thing and stuff and it makes you really think about how much silence you have in your life really like how often do you talk to people when you're doing things and tasks and you're in the zone or, if you, or whatever so there's that um, looking forward to 406 um, no again no idea was was coming again still don't think anyone's gonna come out alive but I hope Krista makes it I really do. I mean, I wanted Dom to make it, but I don't think Dom's going to make it. But I really was hoping Krista makes it. But like I said, I think the only living creature that has any association with Elliot that's going to make it out alive is Flipper. Everyone else is done so. But, yeah. So, it was a pretty amazing episode. Um, I hope it gets some nominations for this one for cinematography, for writing, for music, for acting. Um, so yeah, anything you want while writing. I mean, there was a lot of descriptions of the, the movements of the cameras and stuff like that. I'm sure that's still part of writing. Um, and it would be very funny if two lines of dialogue and that's what wins. That would be freaking brilliant. Uh, that would be a laugh. But, uh, yeah, so. Uh, this is Ferocious Shy. This is F Society IRC Podcast. I'm closing the channel. Logging off uh, for